Recently, I got to build a full Corsair Hydro X custom water cooling system for my main rig, and I was able to get my hands on a Ryzen 9 5900X, which is one of the best CPUs that you can get right now, and it's going to be great for things like my 4K editing workflow. So the entire build is basically centered around the CPU. Now, previously in the same system, I originally had the 5900X, and all the other components are basically the same. So aside from aesthetics, the goal and intent for putting this high-end system together with custom cooling is to see if I can get the best possible cooling for it, keeping all the temperatures low. But most importantly, I wanted to be able to run my system case fans on as low of an RPM as possible because I do want my uh, station to be as quiet as possible. So this is an anti-RGB build. I'll follow up with some numbers, uh, temperatures, recordings, and also talk about the parts used in it.
So here are the parts list. Since this is an editing focused rig, I wanted to max out the AM4 socket with the top of the line 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X, which would help in all of my Adobe Premiere 4K playbacks, rendering, exporting, and general multi-application multitasking activities. Precision Boost Overdrive is enabled as well as XMP for the RAM, which did allow me to hit around 4.8 GHz on the CPU. I stuck with my old 2080 Ti Founders Edition since it still does a great job at both editing and high settings gaming already. In fact, upgrading the GPU doesn't really do anything for me when it comes specifically to editing. Now, this is also my first time using Nvidia's GeForce Experience software to overclock my GPU, which I enabled and got the card to hit just under 2000 MHz while it was drawing about 250 watts. I have a total of 4 terabytes of NVMe storage. 2TB for the main Samsung 980 Pro and 2TB for the secondary 970 EVO. There are no regular 2.5 inch SSDs or 3.5 inch hard drives used. It's 2021, if you can afford to use only M.2 storage drives for your PC, I highly recommend it as it reduces the amount of cables you need to use as well as reducing the overall weight of the system. The loop order on this PC goes from the pump out to the CPU which is routed behind my vertical GPU since you can't see it, from the CPU to the side 240 radiator, side radiator to the bottom 360 radiator, and the 360 radiator to the GPU, and GPU back into the pump. The entire loop is hardlined except for the bottom radiator to the GPU, which is routed with a soft tube behind and under the inside of the case. I did want to make this thing entirely hardlined, but I would have had one really awkward tube that crosses in front of the case in plain sight in a route I didn't like. So combining both hard and soft tubing solutions gave me the best results I was looking for. And I primarily went anti-RGB here because it was really to build a minimal good looking, cool running, and quiet PC using as little stuff as possible. I'm all about less is more. In fact, I even ripped off the default top or front panel IO ports on this case which frees up a lot of unused cables. I got a custom cut acrylic piece with a custom power button I soldered together. I realize I don't use any of the USB ports here, I don't use the front 3.5mm audio jack, and if I only need the power button, it's better to do a custom job for an overall cleaner look. Okay, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Mods by Ben. He was the one that actually cut out that top IO panel piece out for me. I just measured out the piece, I put it into a drawing and converted the file and sent it over to him because I personally don't have the proper equipment, a CNC or acrylic cutting machine to get this done. So thanks to him, I was able to basically complete the project with this icing on the cake. And uh, yeah, so if you guys don't know who Mods by Ben is, he is a photographer and he is a DIY PC modder himself. So he puts a lot of content on his Instagram and he also just started a YouTube channel. So, uh, I'll have links to both of his social medias down below please show him some love, uh, check out his stuff. I think I really like his creativity. I think he does a really, really good job. So please check out his work, guys. Let's talk about the thermal results. I prep my system by running CPU and GPU loads with Cinebench R23 and 3 d Mark for about half an hour to warm it up and saturate it with heat the best I could. Then each test run was looped in the respective CPU and GPU stress testing software for 10 minutes to get the numbers. I did the test with case fans running at 1000, 1600, and 2000 RPM speeds for comparison, which would be the Corsair M0120 Pro non-RGB fans. Now I mentioned the goal of this build was to keep it quiet, so 1000 RPM is the fan speed I keep this PC on no matter what activity I'm doing, except when I'm exporting a video in case which I'll ramp them up to 1600 RPM where I will have all my cooling profiles saved in Corsair's IQ so it's easy to switch back and forth. I found that during CPU stress testing via Cinebench, there was almost no difference in terms of average sustained temperatures when running the fans on any of these 3 RPM speeds. Between 1000 and 2000 RPM, 
there was only about a 1 degree delta from 86 to 85 degrees C. As for the 2080 Ti stress test, I used 3D Mark Time Spy, which resulted only in a 3 degree delta between 1000 and 2000 RPM. Even at low 1000 RPM, the GPU stays in the low 50s, which is really great. So this tells me it's really not worth running faster fan speeds at this point, and that my build was able to achieve the low acoustic levels I was aiming for. Here is a quick sound test. Okay, so final thoughts. I really liked how this system turned out. I was able to achieve all the things that I had set out for this build to do. Basically overclock and keep the temperatures low and most importantly have all the fans running on very low RPMs so that the entire system stays quiet. Miscellaneous notes, uh, for the coolant, I use about three and a half cups of coolant, had a 50-50 blend ratio with Corsair's XL5 50% uh, clear and 50% blue. The blend doesn't really do much. It doesn't dampen or lighten the blue. It's actually very overwhelming. But I ended up just going with it anyways. That way I have like some spare amount of clear and blue coolant laying around for any future builds if I ever want to use those colors. I also didn't put any gaming benchmarks in this video because I mean, it's a 2080 Ti. I know some people, or maybe very few people will ask why, but just to address it here, uh, it's a 2080 Ti, it's an old car. It's been around for three years. It's previous gen. You can find a bunch of data scores and benchmarks and comparisons on the internet. I felt like it would just be redundant information and a waste of my time to do that here. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. If you have any thoughts and questions, please comment down below. Like and subs for this video if you enjoyed it and wanna see more content from me. I really appreciate your time tuning in here, and as always, I will see you in the next one.